Hi, Henji, and thank you. Uh, as usual, uh, we can start with Zendu. So last week, uh, we continued working on the design extension in order to manage in a more efficient way those sidechains whose use case don't require the seizing functionality. And as mentioned last week, we have already identified a couple of possible paths that we can take, and we have already defined high-level tasks list for both of them. Uh, meanwhile, we are performing a very detailed analysis of the uh, specific changes required for both approaches and what are the pros and cons. Uh, this will help us during the implementation phase. Okay, this was the main focus for Zendu for last week, but we also worked on other things. And among those, we opened up PR to simply uh, simplify the uh, compilation with CLang and tools for static code analysis. And next step for this will be including a doc file to describe how to use all the static analysis tool and then opening the PR for the internet. Also, we continued and concluded the investigation around an existing GitHub issue concerning uh, some unit tests that were failing in the bug mode, and we ensured uh, uh, no fix uh, was required there. And then, still related to Zendu, we completed the first internal code review on a total of three pull requests that are now subjected to the final code review, uh, which is uh, currently in progress. Uh, these are the compilation on newest Linux systems, linking on Limstark and update tip event. Okay, now uh, switching to SDK, and in particular for what regards Glaze, after the release of the uh, version 034, that included the backup functionality procedure to recover token and uh, token fungible boxes at the height of the last value certificate, uh, we finalized the related documentation and we published the revised version of it. And uh, together with these, we continued working on the features expected for the next SDK versions. In particular, we completed the design for the fork manager, and we also completed the implementation for the wallet secrets import-export functionality. So the code review process was uh, already started. And uh, speaking uh, uh, again about code reviews, we are uh, conducting uh, uh, code reviews related to several other requests that are almost ready to be finalized and merged. And the full change log for Blaze 040 will obviously uh, be provided. So, I mean, um, uh, once we will be near to the next release. And last but not least, uh, always related to Blaze, we are now testing the changes that are related to the some connectivity issues. Uh, I mean, the peer, uh, let me say, management and, and in the network layer of the SDK that we wanted to fix. And the environment to test is now up and running, and we are proceeding with that. Okay, now uh, moving on with the uh, EVM sidechain. Uh, after having completed many tasks, like uh, I mean, we integrated the Ethereum transaction to the common code base, um, so we are able to let me say use the same primitives and so on um, that are used on, on on Ethereum, and also adapting the existing APIs to the CAM model, uh, adapting the session test framework to run uh, Ethereum application. We had uh, then a technical workshop here in Milan to finalize and agree on multiple uh, code design strategies. This was extremely productive and helpful uh, to validate the design analyzed in the previous weeks and to share thoughts and knowledge useful for the next phases. So, I mean, uh, all the developers involved had a, had a possibility to interact and see, and also, I mean, uh, side by side, uh, looking at uh, the code and maybe particular things that uh, were useful to share uh, in a more uh, quick way. So really happy about that. Um, uh, for sure, uh, this uh, uh, speed up a lot, uh, the development. And then we moved on uh, with the next tasks, and in particular, we completed the state storage implementation. Uh, so currently, this is under review. And we continued developing the smart contract execution part. So, I mean, uh, how to execute the smart contract, how to, uh, let me say, invoke this smart contract execution from uh, the Java layer. And uh, we applied a few minor changes to the Ethereum RPC server. I mean, the our implementation of the RPC server that is uh, Ethereum compatible uh, after the last code review, and this is currently in progress. 
And uh, we have been working on multiple message executors in order to support forging stake delegation and backward transfers in the account model. I mean, in this concept of message executors, it's, it's a way for abstracting uh, on our SDK. Uh, what is the implementation that uh, need, need to, let me say, implement or uh, run uh, the specific uh, logic that has to be invoked. So, for example, um, if you, uh, I mean, for the EVM sidechain, most of the functionalities are going to be forwarded to the EVM. And so the implementation uh, called is the is native EVM library. But, for example, for what regards the forging uh, uh, managing part, uh, there is uh, uh, some specific code on the Java side that is managing that. And so this is a message executor. And the same for requesting a backward transfer. So, uh, and for a specific EVM, sorry, for a specific site that is not using an EVM, you, will, you can write your own uh, message executor that can even use another uh, implementation of the EVM or having a specific logic written uh, directly uh, uh, in Java in your application. So, I mean, a lot of updates as usual. Uh, sorry for being long, but I mean, uh, these were the main points for today.